the beginning of the pandemic, I had a fuck buddy that we were like, okay, we're, we don't want to be boyfriends, but like we're, we, we have to like have something. And then I think we had sex like three times and we were like, no, this isn't going to work. Cause you uh, were scared of the virus. Or no, were... because we were bored of each other. Oh yeah. Uh, that was, yeah, so... yeah. The same, I, I swear to you, Joel, don't yeah. get married, honey. <laughs> I swear to you. I had the same thing happened with my, uh, pandemic fuck buddy like i saw her three times and then i was like this isn't where i'm bored i'm married you know like i had a lot there's a lot of well reasons. we're we're we remain because like the way we started is we met and then the, the second night we saw each other out and we wanted to like hang but at the same time both of us almost simultaneously were like hey if you want to go hook up with, with another guy like i know it i know what these trips are right so like you can go and do that wait that's like a thing yeah, like, where like you're with your boyfriend and you're like I'm actually they're not boyfriends. They, we, we weren't boyfriends. Oh, yet. okay. We okay, weren't okay. boyfriends. By yet. the way, before you finish this story, you're tuned into the Endless Honeymoon podcast. We've already started rolling. I'm Moshe Kasher. That's Natasha. I'm Natasha, and this is our friend Joel, Joel Kim, Kim Booster. Booster. Hello. Wait, I always want to fluff your pillow too. Oh, honey. oh yeah, thank you. The service. You deserve more. It's incredible. There. See, that's there not go, fluff honey. my pillow anymore. <laughs> Since the fuck, buddy. Okay, he doesn't so, deserve it. So you got there. You're there on a let's get let's get wild. I remember that weekend. week really well. It was actually. it was like Memorial Day weekend. I just um, remember that weekend when everybody got vaccinated and we were like, let's party. Yeah. And I my bit let's party was I went to a stand up show and I sat in inside. Wow. And I fucking I raged. You really you really lived it up. Um but no, the second night that we were hanging out, we went to like an orgy together. Mm. And like that's when I knew like okay we, Wait, uh, I love that hang. you describe him as someone you were bored with. Oh, oh that's no, okay. no, 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 no. Okay, this turned into love. This, this was the, the pandemic, fuck buddy. This is like a okay. year before I met my boyfriend. This, like um, every meet cute, started with an orgy and ended with love. Yes, yeah. <laughs> um, he like, and the thing is, is like at, by the end of the weekend, he was he was living in San Francisco and w- had just taken a job that was going to bring him to L.A. And I was going to go to New York and film Fire Island for the summer. And he, so we were like. Loved that, by the way. You You were amazing. Thank you very much. Um, But we were like, this, I don't, he was like, I don't want a boyfriend right right when I moved to LA. And I was like, I don't want to be your first LA boyfriend. That sounds like a disaster. That sounds annoying. Um, High maintenance. So then, but by the time I got back to LA. They say Wilshire Boulevard. (laughs) Yeah, you don't want to deal with that. (laughs) They say La Cienega. I got to figure out how to say Los Feliz. Los Feliz, yeah, that's the big one. That's the big one. Okay, go ahead. Um, But no, like I got back and like, we were like, we're not going to be boyfriends. And we, but we still like, I mean, I have talked to him every day since the day that we met. Um, in some f- way, form or another, except this year was the first time, the longest I've gone without speaking to him because he w- left for Burning Man before I did. Okay, hold on. <gasps> no, hold on, hold on. No, you, now, you're, 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 you, you've gotten ahead of the question I really wanted to pose to you, but I'm not going to allow you, and as much as I love your love, Joel, and I have loved you for so long. You're one of just my favorite people. And one of the Joel was people. one of the people you picked to write on your yeah. show. Yeah. You, were, you were my second comedy boss ever. In oh, is that right? Yeah, how was that? You toxic? were great. No, oh, I fucking love that okay. room. You, I like cried like twice in that room. I remember that. Yeah. Oh, and you were so sweet about and it. And I almost sniffed poppers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I almost yeah, yeah. relaxed. Yeah, 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 you yeah, almost yeah. forced me to relax. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was so curious <laughs> that I was like, can I smell it from afar? And well, Anyway, I don't, um, <laughs> I'm not going to allow you to brush past an orgy. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm yeah, not going to yeah. allow you to just drop that in without getting a little more. De- How many people are we talking about? I mean, this was a big PV after, so there was probably like a hundred people there at an orgy. But not but everybody. Like, not everybody. It wasn't like the big. It's not Caligula. It, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. It Did wasn't that. It, it was just like lots of different rooms I you see. could like wander in. You could be. There was like a DJ. There was a, oh, a clothes check. I literally lost all my drugs there. They like fell to the ground, and um, he we walked around for like an hour <laughs> to try and find them. I went to the lost and found because the orgy had a lost and found, and someone had turned my drugs. In. Wow. And I was like, this is community. I thought you were going to say you dropped a bag and all of a sudden there's like a hundred no. <laughs> men scrambling. <laughs> Wait, like, can I ask a this. really dumb question? Because yeah. I've never been to an orgy. Sure. That is fucking, I just want to say pathetic. Yeah. <laughs> Straight up. Are women there? Um, th- Sometimes, yeah. And like some guys get really weird about it and some Wait, don't. I don't really a, It's care. a gay orgy, but women are there? Yeah. I mean, and I mean like trans women and cis women will but be there. Are they in, are they, are they? They're not participating. They're, they they're, they're watching. They're, they're just doing? like, they're just hanging. They're, they're just dancing. hanging. Dancing. I, I will say recently there was an orgy where like one guy was being kind of like inappropriate and weird and rapey and like no one had the balls to say anything to him except for the one woman who was there. She huh. went in and like protected all of us. He was being, she was the only one with the balls to be like, Hey man, you got to go. Cause you're being fucking weird. 
Wow, that's impressive. I think it's because he was hot mm. and that like confused the issue, but right. like oh, she actually, she didn't care. There is nothing worse than a hot person that's so gross you're not interested. Yeah. That's, it's tough and it happens a lot in LA. Yeah. Because a lot of these guys have never gotten a note about <laughs> like, it is rough. <laughs> like you get them home and it's just like, oh, no one's ever told you you're bad at this. No, this same thing with pretty girls. They say like pretty girls make grace. Pretty girls make their own rules. Like I, I've definitely dated people that are so beautiful that it's like, oh, you've never heard no before. Like yeah. no one's ever said no. No one's ever not bought the thing for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. that is a thing that and listen, as somebody that's that hot, but that <laughs> has maintained a really kind of cool down to earth attitude. I was a great boss and stuff like that. Yeah. All right, we'll get to Burning Man. I have a question for you. Yeah. Specifically for you. Uh, you're cool. You're funny. You're smart. You're, you're gorgeous. You're, you're gay. Well dressed. You're stylish. All things Natasha likes. Oh, right. Okay. Can you make an uh, impassioned plea for why Burning Man isn't for losers? Oh, wait. Hold on. Hold on. Can I just say really quickly? I'm sure Joel did not go into the workers camp like you true. did and have to piss in a portalette and eat the food that's like I've for never the... seen Joel at Burning Man, by the way. I, I, oh, okay. um, no, actually, Natasha, I am in a camp of 20 where we all pitch in and do all the things and mm. build the camp and like mm. offer something to the city. I will say, I this is my thing about Burning Man. I do not try to convince people. I do not try to evangelize for Burning Man. I just need because a specific <laughs> target. I'm not, not going to do it. Because here's the problem with Burning Man is there's so much confirmation bias, especially recently, because my, when I'm at Burning Man, my phone is in my tent. I do not look at it. It's one of the biggest selling points of Burning Man for me yeah, is that yeah. I'm not able to use my phone for a week. But you don't have to go but to an uninhabitable desert to not use You kind of do when you're this addicted to my phone. I'm addicted to my phone. Just like, delete truly. Instagram. Uh, does not work for me. I'll go on the browser. Like it, <laughs> it like literally doesn't matter. I need to go to uh, a city of 70,000 people where there is no cell service. Um, third largest city in Nevada mm -hmm, when it happens. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And... This is but this is what I was saying about confirmation bias is like the only people who are releasing content from Burning Man are the worst people at Burning Man. So of course if you're only seeing content and seeing Burning Man through their eyes, you're going to think it's full of shitty entitled like people, but it's a city of 70,000 like there's going to be literally every kind of person is going to be there and you can opt out if I, you want to. I always compare it to comic books. Like the the comic book dork like the stereotypical comic book dork is the person who only does comic books. So you go, oh, comic book people are dorks. But people, a billion people read yeah. comic books. So I think that, but she doesn't even, she just hates it on a more, much more visceral soul level. Well, I remember my first year going before, like weeks before I went, I had a bit in my set about Burning Man and you were at the show and you literally, we didn't have a chance to talk. You grabbed me as I was coming off stage and you were like, don't go. <laughs> Don't do it. I did. Don't, you did. You literally <laughs> grabbed me as though my life were in danger. <laughs> And we're like, don't go. I it recognize is... something in you that yeah. I must well, have. No. Listen, until I met my boyfriend, who was the person who dragged me to Burning oh, Man for the first time. He's, this was his sixth burn. Mm -hmm. um, I literally like could, I would never have gone. And I think also like. And I was wrong. New York burners are, I don't know, maybe a different kind of burner than like LA SF burners are. Sounds like a person talking about New York without Burning Man. Being a New Yorkers are just di kind of different, yeah, kind of more sure. down to earth yeah. and cooler. Kind yeah, of. yeah, 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 yeah. But I, he's the first. He was the first good evangelist for it for me. And like, obviously, I wanted to go because he's my boyfriend, and I wanted to make him happy. But mm -hmm. um, Honey, that sounds <laughs> like I went three times. How many times have you been, Joel? I've been twice. Okay, well, I'm already yeah. beating Joel. Yeah, 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 okay, yeah, yeah. if you go next time and you are pregnant, yeah, you go will pregnant. Not go you back. were pregnant. That was a huge tactical error. Did on you? My part. Know that last year the first baby ever born on Playa happened. Oh, how cute! How um, cool to have your baby born where there's like un uninhabitable yeah, no, 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 mud. I, everyone was like, she was um, stupid. Yeah. yeah, you can actually get your kid probably taken away for going you to know, Burning they Man. They named that kid Molly, right? They had to. <laughs> they had to. Come on, they must have. They must have. Um, yeah, I will say the one thing about Burning Man, and I, maybe I'll feel I differently when I have kids. I can't believe you've only been twice, and you're and like, it's so awesome. That's what people. That's you're what people, in love. It only takes one. It only takes one. But like, I do think I see the kids at Burning Man sometimes, and I am like, the children. I don't know, because like the whole one of the big like draws of Burning Man is like sort of reliving childhood. Yeah, that's true. in this like environment, and it's like if you if this is your normal, if this is your baseline for what life is like. 
where do you go from there? And I've met people who've been, who are like, yeah, I've been to Burning Man 11 times. I was first brought there when I was five. I fucking hate it. My parents gave sure. me Molly when I was 12. I'm See, never going back. I'm not going to give her Molly. Listen, I've been, this was my 22nd time. And so Oof. I'm, I'm in a different zone where I've done, I've had the, uh, life changing experience and yeah, then yeah, I yeah. had the like, okay, I'm going to try to revitalize this experience. Mm-hmm. And then I've had the, I've had probably five of the, I'm over this. Why do I still do this experience? And now I'm at this phase of like, I want to try a new version of this. And so I, this year was looking at everything through the eyes of like, what if I brought my kid? This could be fun for me. And thank God you didn't bring her this year. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ. No, they're like making fun of moms who brought their kids. That's why I like this uh, motion. I get into it a lot because he really wants to bring our daughter. But then that means I have to go because someone has to watch her motion. You can't just take her around playa till 3 a.m. Can I tell you a story about my child? I know mm-hmm. this is your favorite topic, Joel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Today I was walking her home and uh, she's been, we've been having a really difficult time getting her to sleep. She comes out, she fights. She's like, oh, my elbow. She's an actress. She's like, my elbow, <laughs> my butt, my butt hurts. <laughs> like everything. There's like 50 different things that couldn't possibly all be cascading at once. Uh, and so t- today I was walking her home from school. I go, last night we had a really hard time getting you to bed, so I want to offer you a deal. And she's like, yeah. I go, do you want to hear the deal? She goes, yeah. I go, okay, mom's leaving town tonight. It'll be just you and me in the house tomorrow. She loves to sleep in our bed, but we don't like it because we we like we like to fuck. We like to create our own little orgy, mm-hmm, an orgy mm-hmm, of two, mm-hmm. um, which some say doesn't qualify. But I said tomorrow when mom's gone, you can sleep in my bed if you if tonight you go straight to bed, and because we're doing a podcast. And she looks, she's five. She goes, I would like a better deal than that. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, okay. Well, do you want to make a counter offer? And which is, by the way, this is like deep Jewish tradition. Now I'm feeling like I'm really connecting with her. She goes, "What's a counteroffer?" But you're like literally not supposed to be teaching them to bargain. I think you are you're, though. No, she's in bed. She went straight to bed. Right. But what was the deal that you all gave her? Two more pieces, two pieces of, of candy. candy, and she can sleep in the bed with me tomorrow <laughs> night. I'm she played you, man. She played you. <laughs> she rolled now you. you know, now you know not to come in with your best and final. Right, like, right, 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 right. I need to be more like the AM. TP, TP, TP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you need know. to watch some Shark Tank. Yeah, really that's get, right. Yeah. Really get on and for it. that reason, I am leaving your mother. <laughs> <laughs> that could be our new game show. Yeah. <laughs> but being a mother and raising a child is degrading, Joel. You're yeah. lucky you're not doing it. I had lice last week. Oh, I mean, I didn't know you were going to mention that on the podcast. It's yeah. gone. I had a second checkup. I'm just saying. Do you ever have lice when you were a kid? I don't think I did. They used to do insecticide, and now what they do is they send a hippie to your house. <laughs> I swear, like no. everything is like the 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 lice mama, lice lady, lice oh my pal. God. No, no, honey, I and paid come, for that because it was a no, Sunday and the clinics were closed. The, you can go to a the lice clinic. Clinics are hippies too. It's all like we do oils now. Like nobody. Oh right. Anyway. Oh, oh you're saying the there's not a little bit of lice running around the Puerto Vallarta uh, <laughs> post pandemic orgy. No, but like scabies and sure. gonorrhea, et cetera. Scabies. Um, wait, classic. this, by the way, not to, uh, most want to know about your orgy. It does sound fun and fab. It's great. Yeah. And it's like, a, you you can sort of dip in and dip out. Like I, Literally. Yeah, yeah. And like, just, um, that's, a, but that's the case of like every orgy that we've gone to together since being together. And how like, many, how many are we talking over here? Uh, like, I don't like, it's really like, it's, it's a, it's like a couple times a month. Mm. surely and you guys don't live together we do you do uh, we all but do he hasn't slept in his apartment in six months or so it's currently like the most expensive storage unit uh in la but um you're afraid to make that leap and it's not that we're afraid to make the leap because he does live with me but like it's just we don't know he has to get rid of all his shit basically yeah it's and such like a, yeah, he's got a lot of he's got a lot of hula hoops he's got a lot of art cards <laughs> he's got a lot of ayahuasca singing bowls there's he's a lot of get, math lot, involved in that i get it a lot of stuff it. to get rid of i love that we transitioned from the negotiation with my daughter back to the orgy I yeah do like that well yeah. i just I wanted question. to finish it off because it's a very unique perspective i want fin- to finish it off too <laughs> I, i'm curious at an orgy i've never been to an orgy i've had I've even had, in the SF, yeah, even at you Burning Man, been to yeah. have you orgy? ever been to the Orgy Dome at Burning Man? I've never been to Orgy Dome. No, be- or I mean, we we walked past that and made fun I, of it. I've right? never been they, to Orgy Dome because I I don't know why I never tried that when I was. Well, single. you need to have a girl with you, so right. that was probably there was a, a lot of rules. Entry. I don't know why I never tried to do it when I was single at Burning Man, but I never did. I did go to a party uh, called Kinky Salon in San Francisco, which I guess technically was it was like a rave that was a sex party. Yeah. It was a sex party. Yeah. But an orgy sounds to me much more, yeah, Roman and Caligulan, like sure, sure. just a big room of I mean, writhing bodies, kind of. No, I mean, most of them are like 
three or four guys like fucking over here and this right. is happening over here you know like it's just all over the I've place. been to the power exchange too in San Francisco you ever been there yeah 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 I've been there I there, but you were on the gay floor yeah down on the straight floor it's a darker there's a much darker situation I feel like you guys were having fun upstairs there was a, just a lot a lot of disappointed straight well, men walking I around I think the thing is is that like gay men we are used to shame and overcoming it because mm. we most of us anyways in my generation on like we lived with shame about who we were for so 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 long that now like once we sort of broke that curse it's like well anything goes now like I'm not going to feel sorry for any of this right. now you Let's know Let's party yeah okay. at, when you're at a um orgy uh, do you what is the what is the etiquette of of saying I'm interested in orgying with you? Well, it, this is a tricky thing because unfortunately, like we're all men, we're all gay men, and it's like eye contact is consent sometimes. Uh-huh. That's how it was at the spaces. hot tubs, honey. Yeah. We went to this like um, hot tub place that was naked, and before you got into the hot tub with someone, you had to make eye contact. Oh, really? <laughs> right, but it was it, not, which was so weird because it, it was be like a man, and you'd have to nod and like it was consent to enter the hot tub. Got it. Got to got enter it. the hot not tub. Not to enter my body. That's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but still, you know, it's not exactly what I'm trying to do is make eye contact with a naked man before no, I get yeah. in the hot have tub. Have you ever accidentally made eye contact with somebody that thought it was consent, but it definitely was not? Consent? Oh, all the time. <gasps> what do you do? You go through with it. You, uh, you, you do it? <laughs> Wait, you just fucked them? Yeah. Like, at least I have a real problem. I have a real problem with, like, saying... I have had sex with people... Like, I... Literally, like, sometimes a guy will come over from Grindr, and it's clear he's been using pre-pandemic photos. Uh-huh. And, like, I never have... He's just got COVID wasting? Yeah, or I just, like... I, I never am, like... I never know what to say mm-hmm. or to get them to leave, so usually I'm just, like... All right, get in here. And uh-huh. then I do that thing where they're like, no, no, no I don't want to come yet. I don't want to come yet. And you're I'm like, like no, 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 you're coming. Yeah. Because um, you got to go. Going. Yeah. Right. Wow, that's crazy. That's so interesting. Yeah, you... I should probably not advertise that about myself. <laughs> Listen, we can cut it out if it's not something you're comfortable talking about. But it's Hey, but I like it. It's detail. just sex. It yeah. really makes it, puts it into perspective. No, no. And like, I'm, I'm horny enough that like, I can muscle through it most of the time um have you ever not been able to yeah one time i i did we were i don't know if you were there actually it was a uh, um comedy festival in uh grand rapids michigan and i've done, I've done it yeah, yeah. Sounds i will like say Moshe. Mm-hmm. i will say there. the offstage talent is not giving in uh grand rapids michigan as mean, a, just the, sexually uh-huh. um and so i remember i got dropped off in like this this neighborhood um in this like suburb of grand rapids and i the guy was like my parents are home so you have to come around the <gasps> back to it. the back like down like where the finished basement is so that that's where I live. And this man was probably in his 40s or You're 50s. You're like tripping over fishing tackle. Yeah. And then I got there and he was like, I made my own lube. And he reached into an old no. ice, pu- like oh. big ice cream bucket thing oh, and just no. like showed me this lube that he made. And I was Do like. Do you have a gun? No, I thought I was. I actually w- left that situation because I was like, I think I'm in danger. Yeah. Um, and I mean, it's it's a it sounds miracle. I have been murdered. He like made his yeah. own lube. Yeah. yeah, yeah, what yeah. Was, so you just I was just like, I literally was like. I I think I'm like too fucked up. I mm. think I'm like way too f- drunk to be here. I should go. I should go. I'm like way too drunk. I'm about to barf. Drunk. That's did, probably yeah, a good yeah, thing yeah. Did, he, did he beg you to stay or he just yeah. was like, oh, yeah. oh, of course he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he had like three monitors all playing porn already when I got there. Whoa. And like, um, you are so brave. He's or, horny. Yeah, that that part. Um, I'm really stupid. I mean, the, the fact is, is like I should have been murdered several times over at this point um, because... Well, and I, the thing is, is scary is that recent when I got back from Burning Man, I opened up Grinder, and I got a message from a guy who's like, it was j- not his face, and he was like 98 feet away, according to the app, and he was like, your air conditioning unit's really loud, and oh, it is because no. it's broken right now, and I was like, how the fuck did he know I was in this specific house, oh, like, is no. he just standing outside my house right now, and then he blocked me, mm. and like, my boyfriend is terrified at this point, and like... But you're so afraid of saying no that you ran out to the street. Yeah, I was like, wait, come back, come back. (laughs) Well, Joel, I don't know if you're the perfect person to give advice. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, I am in a very, (laughs) very functioning relationship (laughs) right now. With your sex drive. (laughs) No, I mean, Joel, Joel, you are, he is, because Joel, you are, aside from being hilarious, you are, if you have not seen Joel stand up, 
Yeah. You're so Thank funny. You. Really top, and you've transitioned. You wrote on like the like so many great shows that I love. Big Mouth, the other two. And then you also act in shows. And then you had your movie. And I just think you're so talented. Thank you. But Joel, I was going to say, as we're, <laughs> since we're pouring on the compliments, you're wise. You have wisdom. You No, you are. You're Does very he? Smart. That I wasn't sure no, of. No, I'm not saying you're wise about personal life choices. I'm <laughs> saying like you, you're a big brain. I think yeah, of you yeah, as a big brain, yeah. a Thank smart you. man, and somebody that can, in fact, can, in fact, give a wonderful uh, bit of advice to our first yeah. caller. I wish you hadn't left. Own, I want, I'm glad you left. I wanted to know what the lube was so bad. I mean... Yeah, I don't know. It was probably like something mixed with coconut oil, to be honest. That's usually what they was are. Was he cute? No, he was like not. Oh, because his pictures, that's yeah. what he said. Oh, do you ever think it's a little bit hot, though, if they're like a little bit ugly? Um, I constant. Bef- it's just the craziest thing is that like I love a Butterface. I prefer, <laughs> in fact, I prefer, in fact, somebody who has an insane body because they had to. Yeah. You yeah, know, sure. not because they wanted to. Right. And it's so ironic that I ended up with my boyfriend has an amazing body, but he he's has handsome. like a model face. No, he's and I'm handsome. like, this is not who I pictured. Well, I did not, Moshe's hot for I did him. Not he picture, must be hot. I did not picture a white guy. I did not picture a, vo- a bottom. I did not picture um taller than me and i did not picture someone with a, a face i could look but, at but he's so. not perfect i i mean i know <laughs> the guy i could look at <laughs> listen i know the guy and i know that there are he has flaws and one of them is he definitely does not even he doesn't even have, have a fucking clue how to make his own lube like he couldn't do it <laughs> if you asked him to this is after 11 times at burning man you would think he would have yeah. learned it coconut point. Yeah. oil and oh, you, you got, can just do warmed coconut, coconut, oil. coconut oil. Oh, you got a recipe, Natasha. Yeah. <laughs> I love how you become all that sex positive the minute Joel gets over it. This I'm sounds great. I'd, I, I'd love to go to an orgy. No, I'm not sex positive. That guy almost got killed in the yeah. suburbs of Grand Rapids. Yeah. Oh, God, what imagine a, what a fucking story that would be. That would be that's so embarrassing. Awful. That is not how you yeah. want to go. I'd no, rather no, like no, die no, in the no. bathroom or something. I, no, I'm right there with you. Trust me. Okay, so listen, we're, we've got someone waiting to talk to us. Let's talk to Matt in Chicago. Here we go. It's so late. Sometimes it's they'll stay up till one o'clock in the morning. It's, That's it's very wild. admirable. Matt, we were just talking about handsome white men, and then you appeared. How are you? Hi, Matt. It's Natasha, Moshe, and our friend Joel Kim Booster. Hello. What's going on, guys? How are you? Living the dream. Cool. <laughs> uh, were you just chiseling your jawline? <laughs> It, this is the only place where the hair grows, so it really helps me out. Oh, I think you look great. How can we help? I think you could maybe do for a little bit of a shave. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm just saying. Natasha, if we're, what? leave Matt alone. Okay, fine. I thought he could take it. Well, my, my, my wife allows me to shave like once a week. So, you know, I think he caught me on day five. Okay. All right. Yeah, well, we, I think we got our first bit of advice for you. Grow a pair, buddy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you don't let that wife tell you when to shave. Whoops. Yeah, yeah, that's... <laughs> whip happy wife happy life yeah so basically my issue is with my mother um i I think i've come to the right place um so my six-year-old daughter is gotten involved in cheerleading and she she loves it and we love to go see her perform at the games and all that stuff except that when my my mom her grandmother shows up. She loves to make like snarky comments during her cheers and her performances, and it's getting really embarrassing. What? Tell me what kind of snarky? Yeah, is comments. she shitting on your daughter? Is, <laughs> is she making? It's, it's it's not on her. It's more of like on the other girls. Oh, she's roasting she the other the other cheerleaders. Like, yeah, and she doesn't realize that she's like literally sitting next to probably that girl's father, yeah, grandmother. So she's kind of wild. She just, I don't think she understands how loud she is when she does it. And I think she just, it, you know, it's it's kind of like what, you know, we do in my family. You make fun of teenagers. <laughs> Not even teenagers, right. six, so, year old. six year olds. Six year olds, yeah. <laughs> six. Six. Wait, six is really young. And and they hardly know what they're doing anyway. So it's like So she's I like shit it? talking the opponents. No, no, no. The other girls no, on her, her, team her squad. Okay. Yeah. They're they're up there with their pom poms doing their cheers. And you know, my mom's out there saying, like, well, you could tell which one wasn't at practice this week. 
does she do this at other events? Like other, like has, she, has your daughter done like pageant, like, or like school things, school performances or anything like that that your mom has been at? Not really to this extent. And I'm trying to nip it in the bud real quickly. Yeah. Does your mom have a history of uh, embarrassing events that she's uh, been a part of or caused? I, I don't have that much time to go through them all. <laughs> Got it. Just so it's been an issue. She like embarrasses you. Well, it, it, it's always kind of under her breath. And it's one, you know, this is like the, her, you know, she's a great grandma otherwise. So it's not that it's just like, she just doesn't know when to say when. And, you know, usually she's very defensive when you bring it up to her because, you know, she thinks like, well, I, I guess I just won't show up for my granddaughter's you know, special day. And it's like, let me just give you a little perspective for a second. Like we have a child and the grandma has never, neither, none of the grandmas have ever come to anything. The child's done. That's not true. My mom's shown up for things. No, I know, but they're not like, can we go to her soccer practice? Can we go to her? Yeah. You know, her, no one's like ask. I, I'm not saying, I mean, they've, they've come to her preschool and they stuff. They came to her preschool. My mom came to Your mom did, but my mom hasn't done anything. I'm just to, saying to that's a big deal. That preschool graduation and one of the kids she called a stupid bitch. And this was a four year old. <laughs> but to be fair, this kid was being a, a total oh. SB. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know. I, I think that the fact is, is that you have leverage here that you didn't have as a child which is your own child and it i think you like maybe don't don't come out and say like do not come but just don't invite her one time let her find out organically that she wasn't invited and when she asks why you can you can tell her like have her be the one that sort of brings it up you yeah. don't think that's better than oh so you're saying you still say the thing you still have the conversation mm -hmm. but you sit you have it prompted by her that's yeah. really smart i like because i was gonna say have a conversation but that sounds so awkward yeah i like it it's like joel's advice i like it. it's like that's smart incite Inci do an act to incite her ire and force her to come yeah. to you and say, why wasn't I there? False and flag. Yeah, it's yeah. a false flag. <laughs> I like it. Well, and, and it's and it's different because like my my dad's is the complete opposite. My dad is, you know, super supportive. Just, you know, he's full on grandpa. You I know, mean, so. your mom is supportive. She's coming to. I mean, believe me, when my daughter has her kids in soccer practice, I'm definitely not going. Here's the thing that I think we're all missing. Um, how old is your mom? She's in her mid sixties. There is a thing that happens to our parents where they start to their brain starts to just curdle a little bit, <laughs> like, and it happens subtly, and then all of a sudden one day you're looking at their behavior, you go, "Were you always this weird when I was growing mm -hmm. up, or am I yeah. like imagining that you're getting fucking weird?" Like they must be getting worse. No one's are. getting better. No. Yeah. After a certain age, you're. I mean, I, don't, I mean, even young people, I don't think are getting better. <laughs> to be fair, like this, what your mom is doing sounds like, is gay man behavior. I, you, could <laughs> you could possibly <laughs> tell her that because, like, is as you were describing it, I was like, this is something I would do and probably get away with, mm -hmm. honestly, um, at an event with my niece or something like that. Even though my niece is a fucking asshole, um, so I wouldn't probably defend her. But it, it is like, yeah, I, it is funny. Like, so I get where your mom is coming from. I get she's that brain. She's roasting them, but yeah. It's, but I think the yeah. part, the part where she's loud is the part where yeah. it's starting to go like this might be a function of her getting a little weird. Can you maybe put her on a group chat? <laughs> <laughs> and, and we're always like taking videos of their performances and stuff. Oh, and you can hear and it. She's, like sitting right next to my wife, who is an absolute trooper for putting up with this. And, but you can over, you know, while the girls are dancing and doing their cheers, you hear my mom like with these like comments and you're like well i guess we now we can't share that Scrap video that. out with right. everybody. i mean that's a really you you should definitely bring that up because that's like a real actionable like thing it's like we can't you're you're ruining these videos we can't show you like, family video you should have a party like a barbecue where you bring her over and play the videos yeah and then say, do, you, do you hear that do you hear the don rickles-esque voice in the background uh, that's you mom have you ever directly talked to her about it not about this specifically, but typically when we brought up things to her that are very like, 
hey, mom, maybe cool it on that. She's always like, well, you're just being too sensitive. And, oh, I see. We can't joke oh. around anymore. Oh, the, the woke mob. Yeah, yeah. The woke mob is coming for me because I think these six-year-olds suck ass. Yeah. She t- dude, Wait, we, got, we got a Trump voter on our hands. I Joel, that was interesting getting in, in a group chat because you think maybe in a group chat she would embarrass herself and someone else might tell her something. Well, no, I'm saying like she if she... She uh, she clearly needs to say these things. Like it, cl- she clearly needs to purge at these events. And if you like, <laughs> put her in a group chat and say like, "Hey, keep like just keep it here." Like we want, we actually want to hear you, but you're yeah. ruining the the videos. Belittle, belittle yeah, the cheerleaders. Go by tear all means. into them via but text, on the group chat via text. What about that's a great idea? What about putting it all on text and saying, "Mom, you just so you know." Uh, your 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 comments. We think they're so funny, but they're coming up on audio. Everyone can hear them. Let's do it in a group chat. Which how would you respond to that? I th- I think you know she she's a very defensive. person. She would take it personally. She's like, oh, I know you just don't want me to be talking, and I'm embarrassing yeah, and, and, you. And yeah, and and you know she had the misfortune of you know having three boys, so you know she's finally got girls to doing girl stuff. Thank so, God she didn't have the girls like I mean roasting them yeah. and the six year olds. You hold the keys ultimately. You hold the keys to the child. I mean, you can be you can do some real fucked up shit. How is want. she one on one with a six year old? Uh, amazing. That's what I mean. It's like it's kind of good to balance out all these like you know bitch ass kids. No, you I'm, know let there be someone roasting them a little bit. No, I think. no, no. This is this is simple. I think. You you say to you you posed it as every time I bring something up with with her she threatens to not come, but that that dynamic doesn't make sense. She shouldn't be there making fun of children. So <laughs> if she threatens to not come, you go okay, mom. If you don't want to come, that's fine. We want you there. We just don't want you there mocking six year olds. So it's your choice. You can you know do what their you parents want. are right there. We don't know who these people are. I mean, it does make sense. Yeah. You, I mean, the the other solution here, though, is like she likely will not change her behavior. So maybe mm-hmm. you stand away from her while you're taking the videos, like find a different vantage point or just remove yourself from her physical prem- like, uh, parameter, just all perimeter. together yeah, yeah, yeah. so that no one knows you're related. Yeah, and yeah, she yeah. could just be the crazy lady at the at the at the game. And you go, I don't I don't know that lady. And don't forget manipulation 101. Make sure to tell them how great how great she is before you give her a note you're the best you're the best grandma she is though it sounds like she's really good and you really are feel lucky that she's so involved and you know i just think that's important to say before you tell them what your issue is and and that's the frustrating part is that it's like otherwise she's you know head over heels with, with with my girls and all that stuff and it's just like we want you there, but it's really tough for you to be there. Be- and and it's like, and of course, my daughter d- isn't hearing any of this stuff. So what? she's out there doing her thing, but we're just over here, like, dealing with it. And of course, like, the politics of, you know, this stuff is always tricky because like we don't know what somebody else is hearing and then they're going to tell the next person that like this ain't tricky. Listen, if you- I if I was your mom... I would want someone to tell me if I was like being embarrassing, you know, like I think, I don't know. I think it's kind of good to let someone know that they're like you, embarrassing themselves. Like you gotta tell her in her mind. She's not being, I mean, you know, like sometimes people don't see how they're acting. Yeah, I'm just going to like flip the script on her and just go with, cause she always likes to say the, like, well, you know, I don't know how many more of these events I'm going to oh. be around for. Oh, so I can just like throw that. I don't know how many more six-year-olds I'm going to be able to decimate <laughs> verbally. Would it come better if it came from your dad? If you talked to your dad to, and asked your dad to talk to her? Or is he like fully in your, that, a similar that situation that you... Yeah. 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 No, he, he cucked out long ago yeah. in the 60s. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. No, don't. It's a, there's, a, there's a legacy here, Matt, is what we're learning. It's like you can't shave unless your wife says okay, and he can't give <laughs> yeah. her a small note. Listen, it's Matt. It's all he knows. Yeah, it's this all is, he knows. This is legacy. This is uh, intergenerational Wait. trauma that I'm yeah. hearing right now. Listen, you just have to have this conversation with your with your mom. And Joel's right. She's not going anywhere. She loves your your daughter so much. She's not going to withhold herself. I mean, that's what she'll pout and throw a tantrum, and, and you'll say... Okay, what do you want to do? I want you around my daughter. I just don't want you to talk shit at fucking six-year-old games. It's pr- it's it's pretty rudimentary. You just got to have a conversation with her. Yeah. Joel, any final thoughts? Any Jerry Springer-esque final no, thoughts? No, I mean, I wish my mom... I like, I would... I, this would almost 
like ex- like accelerate me having kids mm-hmm. if I had my mom was like this. If I knew I would be inviting that into my life, there was like a catty commentary. Coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. I would, I would fucking love it. But you're I understand like, why you don't. You're so. gonna get some like folksy, like sweet, wholesome kind yeah. of like stew making. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not what is available, Matt. In some ways, you're lucky, is what Joel's saying. Yeah. Good luck to you out there. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you, Matt. Thanks for staying up. I'm so glad that um, with all of the hurt in the world right now, that we were able to help this guy. And just make sure that <laughs> tiny drip droplet of a way his yeah. his mom doesn't embarrass his six year old. I don't think he's gonna do practice. any of I that. I totally agree with you. I think he's gonna just. <laughs> yeah. li- I, I think he's just gonna ride it out. Yep, I, I really t- do. <laughs> he's go- and and what's gonna happen is it's gonna turn into a into a violent altercation. At, yeah. at Eventually, the game. Yeah. It's, it's going Wait, to get louder. Wait, you think louder. he's just gonna keep letting? <laughs> I, I don't. He's just afraid to him. stick up to his mom. Yeah, because the thing is, is like he's the, so the sweet solution too. is is pretty obvious you you talk to her and you like do yeah, something about yeah, it and yeah, yeah. it sounds like he's tried this in the past and it doesn't work and why would he you like, know like Moshe you would definitely tell your mom if I she was I would have told her the first you. time the first utterance I would have been like mom stop it like it would have just been so there's no question about it but you're so right it's just not happening He's just gonna. He's afraid. Everybody's afraid of the of mom. Yeah. Well, not every mom, but it sounds like that's no. the dynamic yeah. that she has created, right? That's right. That's right. I, I think we got all the information we needed in the first five seconds of that call. <laughs> really, we got it all. Um, we should we do some secrets. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're gonna play some of our callers' deep dark secrets. Oh, I love that. And we can talk about those. I've actually been doing that at live shows. I've been. I give everyone in the audience a little. A card to write down a secret anonymously, Amazing. and then I pull them What's throughout the best my set. One you've gotten? Um, I've gotten a couple of good ones. Um, one that I didn't use because I was like, "How do I make comedy out of this?" But was Wait. like a really legitimate secret. Was, oh, you read it and then put it back in the bucket. Yeah, like before the it. show. Like I, I only pick like five out of like yeah, yeah. everybody who writes in. But the the most like fucked up one that I got that I was like, "Oh, people really going deep." Was I was sexually assaulted, but I liked it. Whoa. Yeah, and then I actually deduced who that person was because they're they're in my friend group Um, because they said my secret was really fucked up and I was like whispered to (gasps) them I was like is it was it this one and they were like yeah I would just like to say that our secret hotline is a little more anonymous than that yeah (laughs) that's really intense that is yeah wow that's one of them was like I've cheated on my husband and like he doesn't know and he's sitting next to (gasps) me but I used that one in the show and that was great because I was like it was, it's my crowd. I was like, babe, there's only like five straight couples here. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> like, God. That's so every man that night, every yeah, straight man. And every a, straight man. The, all going, like 12 of them in the audience were like, Phew. that's crazy. I love it's that. It's like, um, you know, when you do a um, uh, execution by firing squad and one of the people has a blank, so no one ever yeah, knows yeah, who yeah. killed the person. All of those straight husbands went home and they didn't know if they were the one. I n- Now I'm going to pitch a show that just follows all of them. I <laughs> you love know, that. Like a, an I'm, anthology series of just like <laughs> how each of their marriages ended because they all thought their wives were how this person. How do you person. do it? You have to go home. You have to go home and say, hun, was that your secret? You yeah. have to. How yeah, you have not? to. You really do. Oh, that's crazy. The other fu- the good one, I was like, I took 10 loads last week, and I was like, babe, this is probably not a big secret. <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I was like, usually people who are taking 10 loads, you know, yeah. they talk, you know, it's in their Instagram bio. Uh, <laughs> All right, let's see if we can live up to any of these. I want to take 10 loads in, uh, my, in a lifetime. <laughs> okay, honey, I think you've, you've succeeded. <laughs> Hey, Tosh. Yeah, Mush. Remember when I signed up for that service and then forgot that it was signed up for like nine months? And now I'm actually desperately trying to get to the end of my points on this stupid fucking app. (laughs) Yeah, I remember that. Well, I wish I'd discovered Rocket Money long, long ago so I could have found all of the unwanted subscriptions I have and taken me out of this hell. It really is hell. Did you know that it takes one click to subscribe to things and sometimes 16 clicks to unsubscribe? Yeah, and you could just have Rocket Money do it for you. They'll cancel a subscription for you that was super tricky or time-consuming, and you could try it free for 30 days. That's just enough time to try it and then completely forget about it. In fact, over 80% of people have subscriptions that they forgot about, and I'm one of them. Stop wasting your money. Use Rocket Money. Did you know how much your subscriptions really cost? 
Most Americans think they spend around $80 a month on subscriptions, but the actual total is closer to $200. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Stop throwing your money away, cancel unwanted subscriptions, and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash honeymoon. That's rocketmoney.com slash honeymoon. Rocketmoney.com slash honeymoon. So I report into somebody that is pretty attractive and 20 years my senior. And um, the thing is, he's very smart and I respect him so much as a boss, but, and he respects me as a colleague, and I just feel the sexual tension there, but the fact that he has not even remotely made any move whatsoever and is very respectful and it's like home life, um, just like turns me on even more. And, um, the fact that he's such a good person is just fascinating to me sometimes. And I would never do anything either. It's just he's, I, I'm taken, he's taken, but... Uh, oh my God, she's taken too? I don't know. <laughs> I like going with the fantasy. But uh, yeah, I love him. She loves him. Whoa. That was a big Wait. reveal at the end. <laughs> yeah, I love There were him. so many mini reveals throughout. Yeah. First that he's married. Well, first that he's not interested. <laughs> like, yeah. Apparently. Yeah. Right, um, but she like is just like, why isn't he? Yeah, and it's like... She's not buying it. Well, he's probably like, I'm not going down like this. I'm not going down for this girl. For her. You know, like, this is a post-Me Too world. I am not going down He's got family, he's girl. got job. Yeah, he's yeah, got yeah. two things to also, worry about. Also, it's entirely possible he is fully unaware that uh, of her as a sexual entity oh, whatsoever. No. For sure. You don't you think, think I'm, that I'm she's totally giggling wrong, around him? Yeah, it does. And she with seems, that voice... She loves him. She I turns mean, that voice on. She's yeah. like... Um, I do want to get a spreadsheet going. I, did you have the Excel file open? Because uh, it was definitely a sultry voice. Yeah, yeah. But it's totally possible that he is actually a decent guy. This is what I don't understand about all these people in the world that do weird and decent things, like me too, like fucking your intern. Like, how hard is it to just not fuck the person that you can't? You're not. You can't fuck. I get that it's hotter to do that. And I it's get hotter. It's hotter to do that, but just don't do that. I think it's like a power thing. I yeah. think like it is like. They, they they're so bored by everything else like right you know like they need that element to it to, for it to feel hot like then, they're like why why else would like bill clinton you know like you're the most powerful man in the world like right yeah i just like keep, then you get losers like this guy who's just like well i gotta get back to my wife and bible study it's like yeah. fuck your subordinate for god's sakes if you're listening sir fuck your subordinate you know what it is, Joel, too, for a lot of people, like when you talk about when you're talking about Bill Clinton, it's like power. Yeah. You know, I think that's just like people get off yeah. on that power. And if you're a power, because that's different than being horny and wanting to have sex. Right. Like power is like. And also, I feel like if this guy is as hot as she says. He's not. Well, no, this is the thing. I think if he were not hot, he would have definitely done this. Uh-huh. Interesting. I think... Be, he I must think be cute. He, he must she's be actually giggling. hot. <laughs> she, it she said she I, loves him. I think he's probably hotter than her. <laughs> That's oh, a, but she's got huge tits, yeah, probably. No, no, yeah. So she doesn't this. understand why he's not coming no, on her. I love this, Joel. She's like totally unattractive, <laughs> but delusional. And it's just like looking at him and it's like... And it's so crazy that he's just such a decent, decent man who loves his family so much that he won't... <laughs> give in to the obvious sexual tension between the two of us meanwhile he's like yikes <laughs> no i'm not saying that she's a four i'm saying that she is possibly a seven and he's possibly a nine will you, you know? call back and tell us if you're a seven and he's a nine we would love this to is know traumatizing for her get a quick snapshot well how could it be traumatizing it's anonymous she might be so hot she did sound hot yeah yeah who knows who knows all right let's play another secret <laughs> Hi, Tosh. Hi, Mosh. Fairly new listener, first time caller. Um, this is actually my second time trying to make a voicemail because I'm really high and I fucked it up the first time. Um, but yeah, so I'm actually walking away from what happened in my secret right now. It happened a matter of minutes ago. Um, I met this girl from my college on Hinge and uh, she looked really hot and we texted from like 10 at night to 2 a.m last night and I'm super into it and we um, planned on me going over to her place tonight 
and having sex. And I kind of promised to make her come three times. Um, and I got there and let's just say I really, I, I did not like what I was seeing one bit, but I talked a lot of game and I felt really nervous about telling her I wasn't into it. And also I didn't want to back on on my promise. Good so I, I made her come three times. <laughs> this is so crazy. We are the like we're the same. This is Joel this in Northridge. Where were you? This is you were straight you. Yeah, yeah, this is straight me. Yeah, she's like got a vat of like goop, like ectoplasmic. <laughs> like she's like, look, baby. I mean, I love the confidence. I love the confidence of a of a man saying, "I will make you come three times." Like that's just his thing, and he yeah, did yeah, it. Yeah. And he went ahead and did it. He's just like weeping. He's like the full like. <laughs> Postal service through sleet, through rain, through oh, yeah. everything. But I, I think that's a done. good yeah. that's a good lover though, yeah, right? No. I mean, he's gonna make someone happy one day. Yeah, absolutely. With that kind of um, steeliness. That is cool. He just co- he fucking gritted his teeth, bared down. What did he say? And it was made her squirt. It was excruciating. It is excruciating. <laughs> excruciating. <laughs> Three times. And having having, I have to say, like. Having fingered a woman before, I I it's feel gross, like an right? expert. Well, no, it's not gross. gross. It's Natasha. not gross. That's I'm not one of those gay guys. But I will say it was confusing, mm, <laughs> and yeah. it seems way more complicated than anybody warns you for. I didn't know there were multiple holes. Sure. I didn't know it was going to be like full Robert oh. Frost situation down there. The I, road le- you went the road less traveled. Yeah. Oh, you went. The I don't know. You fingered her urethra. I don't think I did, but I certainly know she did not come. Not three times. No. <laughs> I love this guy. No one was having a good time that night. I love. Was it just? It's why, really hard why? to make a girl come with your hand. It was my twenty first birthday. So it was like a fake. thing. I was like really fucked up, and she, and we were like, you know, there weren't a lot of gay guys at my school, so it was like, you know, you, you're getting a little flirty, sexy with the straight girls just because. And then she was like, "Do you want to do this?" And you're like a woman in college. Yeah, you basically. Were like I went straight. To yeah, college, yeah, yeah. Like for I exper- a day. certainly experimented and made out with more women in college than I have ever have before or since i love this guy i love the i love the idea of her coming the first time and him going fuck (laughs) two more (laughs) two more to go like this is what was the setup it was they were it was like a a hinge he was telling he was bragging about how he is the three come man like that's his thing i make women come three times they also were sexting for four hours right that's too much. That is a lot. You know? what, way what's too the much. cutoff? What yeah. do you think is? Uh, r- I think like an hour tops. You know, if well, there's this, like if you're if I'm busy too, like if I'm like putting the phone down and like coming back. But and this like, coming from a man who uses an app that's so exact that they can be listening to your air conditioner from that outside. Is so <laughs> it's a different dynamic. Yeah, I yeah, think yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right, let's play one more. Hey, Marsha Natasha. Um, I have a secret, and it's that I hate my cat i got her a year ago while i was in a relationship um i like to travel a lot it was i don't know still a little covety we got her and and now we broke up and i have to take care of her and that's fine and my all my friends love their animals and we talk about how much we love our our cats and every time i come home i'm just so upset that i have to feed her and take care of her She's cuddly and sweet, but like, how long do I have to do this for? I don't know. Thanks. Don't tell anyone. She sounded hotter than the first one. Yeah, they both had a <laughs> sultry yeah. situation going. But yeah. what's funny is they both sounded hot, but the guy in the middle was definitely the hottest one of them all. Probably. He's the three cum, he's the three cum if bandit. He, well, no, that actually tells me that maybe he's not that hot. Uh, yeah, he's trying. Right, he's right, right, he's right, right, like, right. I'll keep That's doing a balancing He's your butterface. Yeah. Mm-hmm, he's the, he's the, mm-hmm. he's the equivalent. He, By the way. Like, he has to promise right, that. Right. Notice how he deal. spared us how he made her come, I too. wish we yeah. did know. What is his technique to know he can make a woman come three times? Because I've been with a lot of women, and I could not ever say I will. I will make you yeah, come. I every, it will definitely happen. It, it seems like, from what I understand, they're all a little different. You know, like, and, and sometimes it's very. Difficult. You can't just jerk Ooh. the clit. Oh and my everybody. god! I just realized it. She faked it. Oh no. my god! What if? <laughs> That's so funny. He's suffering. And he's going, this one's for America. And she's just like, when is this fucking guy going to stop fingering me? This is so boring. (laughs) Anyways, the cat hater 
Cats I, are gross. What do you want? I, I love cats. I had two at one point in my life as an adult. But it's they're really easy to get rid of. What are the ethics? Yeah, how I, do you get rid of them? It was you, a- you find you don't like you don't take them to a, sh- a kill shelter, but like there are ways you can like get rid of your cat and a just fire be like, station. this is not this is not like lifestyle lining. You don't have to say you hate your cat. You just can say like. I travel too much. It's not fair to the cat. Will someone take this cat? Yeah. Are there? Don't people come after you though? If you go, I'm giving this cat away. They they will say like you're negligent. That's bad. Don't they do that? Mm, I Lena guess. Dunham got I all think, that trouble I for giving think dogs like, away. My friend um, Pat Regan, very funny comedian, mm-hmm. just uh, gave his dog away that he only had for like three months. Did and people he's, give him shit? He's been doing his bits on on stage and telling the story. So I feel like he's he's not getting enough shit. To not do that. Well, sure, so. but he's a comedian, and and any degradation or humiliation yeah, will no, be no, material. No. Exactly, like, exactly. Lena yeah. Dunham got like dragged through the mud for giving these dogs away repeatedly. But what is the ethical breach? I, I read the story. I go, this is gross. But then I go, why? If they're if uh, if they're finding the dog a home, what's the ethical? Right. I, I mean, it's a. It's Lena Dunham. She's sure, a sure, lightning sure. rod. And yeah. B. Wasn't it's like sort of a pattern. It wasn't just right. like one animal. It's that like she stop gave getting away. a dog. Yeah, yeah. It was like you're point. you're clearly not equipped. Like to do this so just like don't do it anymore i don't find especially i don't think a cat would give a shit well like, the cat doesn't care at all yeah it's apparently all- like i you know we have three street chihuahuas or we, we did not have three now we, we have, have one. one i know but two died this year but no, i'm, I'm so saying sorry. we've had street chihuahuas our whole life and people have told me in the past in la like there's so many chihuahuas on the loose because of Paris Hilton from 25 years ago. Right. And she made it really popular, but it was like, then all these people got dogs and it was just like exponential. And then they just like exploded and gave them all, you know, like Mm -hmm. gave them all away. That's what true Beverly Hills is about. (laughs) (laughs) Beverly Hills chihuahua. Anyway, what are we doing? Uh, Okay. Well, let's take our last call, honey. Yeah, let's do it. We're going to call Ben in Tucson, Arizona. (laughs) Oh, everybody's handsome tonight. Yeah. What's going on right now? My God, and in Tucson too. I what know. are you doing? <laughs> Fucking climbing a boulder. Get out of here. <laughs> With that shirt. Did you unbutton the shirt before the podcast connected or was yeah. it just like that? No, it's just how I, I kind of Oh, with the voice too. My God. <laughs> You know, what? you look like somebody that can make me come three what? times. Yeah, <laughs> what brought you? I first have to ask, and I'm sorry if you love it there, but how, what brought you to Tucson exactly? Uh, grad school. So oh. I went to U of A. Jesus then, Christ. This guy's the most yeah. eligible bachelor yeah, in America. Yeah, yeah, truly. What's your major? Uh, I'm a nurse practitioner in psychiatry. And actually, uh, most a lot of my kids are like exactly like you growing up. Oh, so you're like also a hero? I can't with this guy. I just can't deal. Yeah. Are you in a relationship? Yes. Yeah, I'm actually in my girlfriend's room. Does your girlfriend tell you um like your mustache is literally turned up? Like I like it. Like it's like kind of like twists up. It's very cute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man. Yeah, I usually get roasted for like this part because for some reason it's just straight. Uh, yeah, you're you're good actually. I think um uh, yeah, I don't think you've experienced too much roasting in your yeah. life, to be honest with you. Yeah. Okay, how can we help you? He's like, I guess I'm like too hot, and I'm wondering what to do about that. It's like, <laughs> wait, Tucson's cool, right? That's not the that's not a suburb of Phoenix. That's the one that's over by the cactus, the Segura cactus. Yeah, Tucson's yeah. a cool no, city. Oh, it is. It's okay, a really. Cool I have city. had so many many scarring experiences in Phoenix, Arizona. Sure, that is the sure. whole state is sort of a wash for yeah. me. But I will check out Tucson. No, Tucson's sure. an awesome place. When we went there, we went up there on our uh, endless honeymoon tour. We were like, oh, this is going to be the next kind of place. Oh yeah, yeah. It's awesome. Yeah, it's a cool place. The streets That's were cool. like packed with people. There was like definitely a cool three block, four block area. Everyone's a nine or above, as the, evidenced yeah. by the caller. <laughs> Yeah. Oof. The third time I ever did stand up in Phoenix, they were like, it's going to be in historic downtown Phoenix. It's cool. It's already historic downtown Phoenix looks like a Chipotle. <laughs> it is like you forget that everything is new there. Like it's like relatively to the rest of the country. It's like there yeah. is no historic anything in Phoenix. No, I the was whole on stage- city was bu- built in 2017. I was on stage in Phoenix. peak. This is peak Trump years. And I was doing a bit about consent, about sexual consent. And somebody got up and screamed, no talking politics and stormed out of the room. I, I was like, I wasn't aware consent is a political issue. Like you're, a, you're anti-consent. Well, mask off, yeah. mask off moment. All, all right. right. How can we help you? Sorry. Oh, all good. All good. Um, so yeah, so I'm, I'm 30 and my parents are separating. Uh, okay. You've got a 80. problem. Your dad's hat. What? 
my dad's 80, my mom's 65, um, and they are separating over the summer. So kind of peripherally, like just kind of how to navigate that as an only child with kind of elderly parents separating. But the reason they're separating is that supposedly the only time they've had sex is when I was consummated. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's, just, it's so long. It's just so many years that they've been together. <laughs> wow. Wait, but they stayed together after you went to college, after you went to grad school, after all of that, they still stayed together. Yeah. So why now? Yeah. So my mom did like a life review. She read like Arthur Brooks's, uh, Arthur book, Arthur Brooks book. Um, and what book is that? Maybe I need to read this. No, book. no, no. Don't read the book, honey. Don't read the <laughs> What's book. What's Arthur Brooks book? Uh, it's like how to age gracefully, I think, in like the last like 40, kind of your last half. And anyway, so she did this life review and she's saying, like, I want intimacy, you know, and uh, I guess when I was born, my dad was like, I don't have any feelings for you, like emotionally and this kind of stuff and they so, weren't anyway, physically like, into each other either that this sounds like a nightmare for yeah. you I for mean, both I, of them i get waiting till you're 18 but this it's wild that it took this long for your mom to realize right. this. wait what what were they yeah. like as parents were they good parents were they united front did you feel loved did you feel love in the house did you think something was up <laughs> um definitely definitely felt loved um i think just the you know we were just weren't very touchy weren't very like they, present, I think, they doted on you individually as the only child yeah yeah and i just had like a bunch of lessons so i wasn't really like home a lot so but. this actually this sounds a lot like my parents because so from the time i was adopted my parents slept in separate bedrooms really? growing up and i never saw them hug kiss or anything growing Whoa. up they like were fighting constantly and i wow. remember one time when i was nine i asked my mom i was like why don't you? and we went on separate vacations what? i would go on vacations with my dad and i would go on vacations with my mom but you had a family home yeah but like, yeah, they li lived on s opposite sides of the house. But then, like, I asked my mom when I was nine, I was like, why don't you ever kiss dad? And she, as we were leaving for a vacation with my dad, was like, watch this. And like, made a big <laughs> show of kissing my dad. And it was like, like the only time. Like tongues your dad? No, it was like a peck. It was like a peck. And then the weirdest part is, is when I turned like 28 or so, I, I went home and they were back in the same room. They were like, so loving with each other performatively Whoa. or really no it seemed real and like it i don't you. Uh, it yeah was you. it was my presence apparently but like um you never asked what bro maybe what she read uh james arthur brooks what's his name no brooks is that a just book. tells you to leave your geriatric husband <laughs> but wait what you didn't say like what has happened like it's no. like a twilight zone episode. we don't really we, not we like were that. not super communicative like that um well and you know and my dad passed and then now we are a little bit more open about some of that stuff. But like, yeah, it, we, I didn't have to have a close relation. My, they're like Trumpy and religious. Right. So like we weren't having mm. deep conversations about life and stuff like that. All right. Sorry. So back to you. What are you wondering no. about? What do you what do you want? What do you need to do about this? Parent yeah, trap. So a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Parent what? A little bit of like where to set the boundary. Oh. What are your particular like what's the worst thing about this? Like are they each calling you to get on their side? Yeah, so a little bit of that. So, uh, so when when my dad found out, he went to his PCP and asked for Viagra um, to like try to bring back his like intimacy. And, his, and he's like, telling healing, you all this day late and a yeah, dollar I short, think. buddy. It's, been, it's about forty <laughs> years too late. <laughs> yeah. And also, yeah. what has he been doing all this time? Is his sex drive dried up as well, or does he have a mistress? No, or that's what it is, right? Second he's, family. He's the one that's was holding sex, right? Yeah, yeah. Got I mean. It. Your dad's got his own issues, and that doesn't have anything to do with you. He's got to like figure out what's up with his. I know. You yeah. know, and also he's eighty. He married a younger woman, right? Yeah, yeah. Like and he couldn't keep idea. up with her. That's, or maybe men really ever. do lose lose it in their eighties. I don't no, know, honey. You're not, you're not following the timeline here. What? He is thirty. They had sex once thirty years ago. Mm -hmm. He was this perfect specimen of manhood was created. <laughs> they never slept together before or since. But they raised him as a family. Nobody, nothing dried up. It was never moist. Yeah, it right. was like the Tucson desert in so many ways. Mm -hmm. I mean, have you have you uh, like said to them like I don't want to hear about the particulars of your separation, and they still do it? Yeah. So it's it's a weird it's a weird thing with with my mom especially like. Um, she'll come into my office and like just kind of 
jump on things and like, hey, I don't want to hear about like the intimacy piece. So yeah, my main question was just like kind of navigate, like where to set the boundary with with that because my mom wants, so I was kind of new independence, right? She's, you know, pretty kind of well set up with her life. And then my dad is kind of this other side. AD needs a lot more support. And so, yeah, I mean, just any thoughts on kind of like how to show up for them with also, you know, not being super enmeshed with a lot of, a lot of the funky you, stuff. I mean, by the way, you should be easy on yourself too because this is like a whole new family dynamic now that you've got to navigate on your own. And like you've got this new girlfriend, but it's like, you know, you can't dump all this on yeah. her. And it's like, it's a lot because you guys have always been a family unit and now it's like separate and you've got to like really kind of, you're right, set up what is, it's almost like a new marriage or a new relationship. Like, right. like when we were together, mm-hmm. like I had to kind of set up like what was going to be okay with how many times his mom's coming over and you know what I mean? Like, or like certain things yeah. like, you Did know, you, have that in, like, you, brought, you brought that up and had a discussion about that or. Yeah. Like, cause, cause, well, I, I, I think it like those kind of boundaries are important. I was like, I could, you know, I'd like to hang out with your mom once a week. And, you know, I think that you can, you can go, she lives three blocks away, so you can go as much as you want, but I'd like to make sure that we can all have dinner as a family once a week. I'm just saying like, you know, I just wanted to make sure there wasn't like a knock on the door every day (laughs) when she decided to move here. And like, I think it's, imp- but it's never been an issue because I kind of like, I, I, my senses went up that it might be. And so I wanted to make sure to like establish it early. So your mom is showing up at your office unannounced, like without, yeah. without planning yeah. with you. Well, I think you lie, you do a little bit of a lie here and you say, Hey, my boss is like, not cool with me having so many non Moshe visitors. doesn't agree with lying. No, I love how all of your <laughs> strategies include a little bit of subterfuge. Yeah. They all People have- cannot <laughs> handle the truth. Yeah. I mean, I, I, so we'll tell you say my boss doesn't want my horny, uh, how about mom. I don't want to? I'm I'm focusing at work he, in the he day, doesn't mom. Like that, he wants it to be. I d- I just don't think she'll take it as well. <laughs> like, yeah, she's a 65 year old woman, and this is her only son. Well, like, that's what I was thinking. It's like the one place of deep compassion for your mother is that she was in a sexually starved mm-hmm. and a- forced sexual anorexia relationship where the man closest to her wasn't giving her what emotional the, intimacy, uh, emotional or physical or yeah. anything. And then she's got you who is this man. And you might who, even be suffering from some like emotional. Uh, I don't know what it's called. It's like, um, it, well, it just felt like she, she was dating me for most of my life. Emotional. Like, I, like, I think it's called actually emotional molestation. And it was and just like very I'm, funky. Yeah. I'm just saying like you kind of like it happens, you I'm know, not, and they, they, they put all each parent. I've just read about it. Each parent puts all of the energy mm-hmm. on the only child, you know, and it can be a lot. I'm, and I'm, and I'm, maybe this is a good time for you and also to find a therapist, but also like really like set your own boundaries with the help of people, I think. Well, yeah, I'm not surprised to hear that at all. Like, that's exactly what I was picturing. It's like, she's got this guy that doesn't love her, or or maybe he loves her in in some odd way, but Mm -hmm. doesn't give her the thing. And then she's got this other man in her life who loves her so much because that's her son and that's his mom. And so all of that, now she's single and she's like... It'll be good for her for when you say no. Now she's single and she's like, I'm ready to like get back out into my world and feel who I truly am. Who is she going to turn to to confess that stuff to? But her man, so you, you, that's you, which is you, and she's like, oh, she's there to like give you every single detail and everything that you got. And so yeah. your job is to find that space of compassion. For Does her. he rebuff it and not want to hear it at all? My opinion is that that boundaries. I, I've said this a lot on this podcast. Boundaries are unbelievably easy to set. They're incredibly difficult to hold yourself yeah. to because you're in this dynamic too. Right, you're you you've been dating your mom too, right? Uh, yeah, the, yeah. And so it's very <laughs> yeah. difficult to go, mom. I love you. I I want to be there for you. I am there for you. Moshe's co- a Moshe's a man who likes to date his mom. So yeah, no, I mean I I straight up I made my mom come three times, uh, straight up, and um, I wasn't into what I saw, and it was uh, what was it agony? Was it <laughs> excruciating? Excruciating, but I got through it. No, but you got to set the boundary. And say, Mom, I love you. I'm here for you. I want it. I want. I'm. I'm. I'm excited for the next chapter of your life. But I don't want to hear every word in that chapter. And and, yeah. and and that's not my job. And I love you. My job is to be your son, not your confidant. Tell and, Cindy or whoever. Yeah. Does she her have friend friends? Is. Does she have friends? I know. Great question. Yeah. I'm trying to get her. 
more social. But that's um, not your responsibility to get your mom more social. Like, honestly, like, focus on, you're going to, yeah. you're, you're, you could scare away your girlfriend. You know, like, you don't, your mom should not, I, I don't think when it, at your stage in life, your mom should be pri- a, a high priority. Well, like well I mean, Natasha. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what are you talking about? I don't think that's realistic advice for him. I don't which, think he's ever going to go. What I said? No, I think a little bit of both. But shouldn't like, shouldn't the mom be like number three? It should be like your girlfriend, new family, your career, then your mom. Yeah. Oh, I absolutely trust me. My mom has been far lower on the mm. list. My almost, you know, my entire adult life. Yours so. goes like Burning Man or <laughs> yeah, yeah, your yeah, boyfriend, yeah, yeah. your career, yeah, yeah. No, your career, yeah, career yeah, first. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Um. So I, I like get that. And like, you know, but I just think like there's no way he's going to be able to like say no he's to her. Sprung. I think like the best case is actually just getting her to stop coming to his office. I think that's an easy <laughs> ask. That's I think that's an easy ask. Yeah. Cool. I think that's an easy ask. It's not going to happen though because she No, it would. Yeah, but then she would just find some other way. She's not going to then she's not going to stop coming to the office and then be like, "Well, I can't get to the office, so I guess I'm not going to be able to unload my yeah. latest fantasy on listen my son. while i agree with natasha it is not your responsibility <laughs> to find this woman friends i do think it behooves you yeah. actually it's a little selfish to, of you to actually like help her like yeah. find there has to be a, a group or a cruise yeah. or like something like she like she there must be an over 60 divorcee like something happening in tucson if it's such yeah. a cool city then there's well, got to be something like that. Yeah, they're moving from a 55 plus, you know, zone up into actual Tucson now. Um, oh. So she's getting like her own apartment and stuff. So. Oh wait, I, I have one more thing to yeah, say. Please. What about the idea of like you using the fact that you're close with both of them to say then that you can't really talk to either of them because then you could like get out of talking to both of them. You know, like you use like you, you could, it's like your equal, like a, a equal opportunity, you know, like I'm an equal, equal opportunity son, you know, like I can't really talk yeah. to you about this because I'm talking to yeah, dad. And I'm like Switzerland. I, yeah. I, yeah. I don't want to talk to either of you and I'm telling him the same thing and it's really important for me to keep these boundaries. Then you could kind of like pit them against each other and not like have it be. Yeah. If we could talk about Israel and Palestine. Yeah, really quick. That, I, I think, think that um, would soothe things. That, that's a good idea. That, let's, we could soothe things by bringing that up a lot. Actually, if they're from a 55 plus um, retirement community, odds are they're going to be pretty one sided on that conversation. Anyway. That. No. Okay. You don't uh, think at all though. Like I use, think, use them no, against. I just realized while you were saying it, I agree with what you're saying, Natasha. Yes, that is smart. And that is the boundary that you ought to set. If I'm just like playing armchair quarterback is mom, yeah. dad, I love you both. I want to be your son, but I can't participate in any of the negotiations about this relationship. Oh, dad's but, coming to me with stuff. I don't want to talk to him about it. You're coming to me with stuff. I can't be involved. And you, how could you argue with that? But here's, And then, then it's kill two, kill two birds. Well, here's what I'm really, I realized while Natasha was talking, is that actually your problem with your mother, who is the most emotionally incestuous <laughs> character in this whole drama... <laughs> is difficult for you it's what you need the most healing from and it's it but the good news is it's going to change your mother is on the beginning of like this like widening spreading eat pray love eat pray love ass in tucson thing (laughs) she will find a lover she will she will find a man she will find what she has been looking for in you and unsuccessfully because you're her son you're never going to be able to give it to her and in her <laughs> husband because whatever it is he's never going to be able to get she will find it and she will eventually probably transfer that energy to the, another man and she your, won't bore you with the new man because you've already set the boundary your big challenge i think is going to be your dad because your dad was getting served in some way by this emotionally frigid relationship and he's now going to spend the rest of his life in a, a state of kind of loneliness in a way that he's not anticipating. That's going to be your emotional challenge long term, I think. Do, what do you think? Well, I think it's really interesting that you realized all that while Natasha was speaking. Because when Natasha was speaking, I was just simply listening. Um, <laughs> I, I gave so up young. on that a long yeah. time ago, Joel. Yeah. Um, no, I agree. I like. I actually... I, it sounds like, I don't know if he's a good guy, but I do feel for the dad because 80 is so old. old. Like 65, Mm -hmm. it's manageable to start over Mm -hmm. and to do that. 80 is so fucking old to do that. It's kind of what you get for like dating two generations beneath you. And for sexually starving that person from what do you, yeah, it isn't, it isn't surprising, but it's 
probably going to be difficult and you're going to be mm-hmm. that's going to be i think your big difficulty is watching your dad become older go into the last phase of his life in a state of really intense acute loneliness and he's going to be turning to you you god you're getting the succubus on both sides oh you could marry your girlfriend and give them grandchildren yeah distract oh, distract yes. distract that's a great suggestion know. honestly yeah, yeah. That's the thing to do, and then just give them your grandchild and leave the state. <laughs> <laughs> but be easy oh, no, I on yourself. I didn't actually thought much about my dad. Oh, sorry, my passion. Um, yeah, I hadn't actually thought much about my dad because I feel like the enmeshment piece from the mom has been so. You know, like every time a guy touches her, she's like, "A guy touched me. This is incredible." You know, she's Ew. like, oh, oh, "That no. is so weird." No. no, no. But no. how does she say so, it by not saying? How, how does he? Say, what does he say to his mom that's not like, "Mom, you're being inappropriate," or say something that's embarrassing? I think it's exactly what you guys said. He pretends that he's not grossed out by all the details, and he says, "This puts me in a bad position with Dad. I have to set a boundary." Because th- yeah, the reality is. The truth is, and maybe you want to do therapy about this, the truth is you need to set a boundary with your mom, not just because you're like grossed out because she's finally going to like a 55 plus group sex party. It's because it's inappropriate the way that she looks to you for, for the things that her husband didn't give her. But but in the in the right now, it's about getting saying dad is over here, you're over here. I've got to set a boundary where I can't hear this stuff. Okay, I'll 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 step you one further. What if you say um, listen, mom, dad's telling me about all his conquests. Oh, this is terrible. And you're telling me terrible. about your conquests and then get her all horny for him again. And oh, you can get, get him get back your, together? You can get him back together, boy. I, that's what I said at the top. Parent trap. <laughs> yeah. Parent trap yes. him. <laughs> I do think the ship has sailed on that. But maybe not. By the way, Lindsay Lohan is so good in the in the remake of Parent Trap. I just rewatched it with my child and it's her new favorite movie and she told me she wants to watch it 100 times. Maybe you should rewatch it. Yeah. Okay. Just saying. I wonder, like, is do you think your mom is gonna pull? <laughs> pull men? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you do. I mean, yeah. she Obviously, this, she's these jeans. Yeah, 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 she's yeah. attractive. Okay, that's because I was gonna say, like, it might all solve itself if she's going out there and she doesn't pull, and then she, you know. <laughs> oh wait, but so what does he say to her though? That isn't embarrassing. That isn't like. Oh, this reminds me of Chelsea Peretti's great joke. She was like about this topic. She's like, I was sitting in a movie watching the movie and I turned and my mom was watching me watch the movie. So I just leaned in and opened my mouth to kiss her. And she's like, what are you doing? She's like, I'm sorry. I misread all your signals. <laughs> Maybe you should try that. It's like yeah. lean in one time. Um, <laughs> I no, I think it's exactly what you said. I think you just have to like, even if it's not exactly true, like say like, I'm hearing it from dad. I'm hearing it from you. I just can't hear it from either of you. I need to be like fully, impartial here and like and get her into a group get her into a knitting circle or something in a weird way you have a rare opportunity to have a really justifiable albeit not totally honest reason to tell your mom to stop doing what she's doing to you that's what she's been doing to you your entire life right you never Mm -hmm. had a really good excuse until now now you've got a really good excuse to say dad's over here alone i can't listen to this so that you can then do the work that you probably need to do to the to disentangle yeah. some of those tentacles because I, I imagine it's difficult for you. I'm sure you're in a very weird place. Well, yeah, no, I appreciate that. That's that's he's great. Yeah, I mean, there's Tucson, a Arizona. <laughs> What's that? Sorry, we were making fun of your oh, town. <laughs> Listen, I know it's hard, but <sighs> yeah, are are you okay? Yeah, are you okay with them splitting? Are you like feeling okay, or is it is it really difficult for you? Yeah, no, great question. I mean, I, th- I think the relationship with my mom, uh, just my whole life has been, like you said, with the entanglement and stuff. And that's felt a little bit better that they since they've separated. You're like, um, so you're no, like I mean, a woman who needs to start sticking up for herself, like in the office, mm. you know, like, <laughs> right. I know you're like this cute, tough guy or whatever. You're not really that tough, but you know, like you're, it, you got to like kind of find it a little bit and like, st- it, it'll feel good and it'll feel good to like, like I remember I was acting in something and the actor was like bossing me around and like telling me stuff. And I finally I was like, you know what? Do not talk to me like that. Or I don't know. I said something and like, I swear to God, they treated me like I was Meryl Streep, like for the rest of the whole shoot. And like, it just, fe- there was so much reward that came from me just like on instinct being like, don't talk to me like that, you know? And, and I, I feel like, 
you you kind of have to do that because these people, you know, they, you know, it's it's a hard situation. This kind of thing always happens where somebody calls and like they've got one thing, like really the 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 tenor of your call was like I'm a little grossed out because my mom is like PMIing <laughs> me, right? But the reality is, and it's been fun, and we've loved having you, and honestly, you're really pleasurable to look at. But the reality <laughs> is, after all this, it's like the healing needs to happen from you. Like you're in a you're in a toxic dynamic with your mom. And you have this opportunity, I think, this is not unsolicited because you did call, but for you to heal from that stuff because that's going to make your life, your love life, your parenting life, all of that so much better if you take this opportunity to have your own Albert Brooks moment where you go, yeah, now that my mom's out there trying to find it's a swingers club. It's not Albert club, Brooks, but just, you know. What, 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 oh, who is it? I don't know. I'm just saying Albert Brooks is like a oh, director. Uh, right, right. But I'm saying you have the opportunity to like find healing from this dynamic and I think that'll be, uh, I think that'll be good. Yeah. Well, I mean, awesome. No, I really appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much. I think we helped you. Can we hang out sometime? Or, like, are yeah. you open to that? Like, I'm, <laughs> I, I'm like, going to go to Tucson. <laughs> We're, Joel and I are going to drive to Tucson. <laughs> <laughs> We're on our way. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, be careful yeah. out there. Don't go to any orgies, honey. And, and Natasha's right. <laughs> you get be eaten easy, alive. Easy on yourself. That's the, the name of the game. Compassion yeah. on yourself. No, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Being easy on yourself, it's easy to say that, but then like it's so oh easy God, to beat so yourself hard. up. So hard. I actually just had a conversation with my therapist where I was like, you are too affirming. Like, I don't know why you don't give me notes. And he was like, Joel, because you come in here every week and shit talk yourself for like oh you bring like minutes. a yellow pad of notes for yeah yourself. and i'm like i did you know he's like i don't need to be critical with you you're doing that on your own what is that i mean i almost think like it's kind of what Moshe's is different but i do feel like a lot of comedians have that yeah. stand-up comedians have it Moshe's like mom loved him like too to much toxically look kind of like this i mean i i it's the, like goes either way like you either yeah it, there's just the, the people in aa used to say like there's if i talked to anyone in my life the way I talk to myself or if anyone in my life talked to me the way I talk to myself, yeah. I would never have anything to do with yeah. them again. <laughs> it's so difficult. It's so difficult to break that pattern. And I think that is why you tell people, even though it is the easiest advice on earth to be easy on themselves because it's just a reminder, like, you know, from the outside looking in this, you need to be easy on yourself. But here's where it gets complicated when you're in like an artist or a performer. A lot of it is like, if you beat yourself up, you'll start working harder right. to get out of it. And then it's like you work harder and then you perform better. Yeah. And ultimately with him, I didn't want to say this to his face, but this problem is going to probably solve itself in about six years. Oh, well, there's that too. Life expectancy. <laughs> yeah, there's that too. <laughs> But his, like, mm, you're not right. No, though. but the you're mom, right, you're half the mom right. I'm half right. Still, Listen, no, you're half right. Yeah, yeah. He's got a yeah. cool. He's got a cool 15 years yeah. of listening to his mom just getting yeah, yeah, pounded yeah, yeah. by you're multiple right. geriatric you're right. you're Arizona men. You're, right. you're, you're right. so right that she was like best friends with him. But sometimes people just need to be redirected. Well, it's just like it's so obvious. Like she's got this handsome man that she loves more than anything on earth. She's used to. A man who don't doesn't fuck her, so her son will do. And she's like, "I'm gonna come. You're my boyfriend. You are my boyfriend. Yeah. I date you." And that that that's his job to like break those <laughs> chains of love. Well, that yes, I think we helped him. And Joel, you had so much great wisdom. Thank you. I told you, big brain over here. <laughs> and honestly, it was so fun to have you over. Yeah, I, I, just, I, I miss like hanging with you. Yeah, you're the coolest. I guess sell another show and hire me. Oh yeah, yeah. I love that. Or you, or vice versa. Or vice versa. Yeah, it's much point. more likely that the dynamic will <laughs> shift. So I'm over here waiting. Can I play your mom? <laughs> no, you're too young. You're way too young. She's Wait, emotionally abusive. You? <laughs> you might like it. No, I it think could I could, be a, it I could, could be play a Gilmore a, Girls situation. No, right? I could play a mom in the seventies. Like not his mom though. Or wait, you're 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 in in the eighties. Yeah. It. This is the thing. The period 80s. piece. Nobody really knows wait, how old he is. He's not going to do a is. show and not cast himself. No, but I'll be his mom. Didn't yeah, you have but, a white mom? Yeah. I can be his white mom. Yeah, but it's going to be him. It's not going to be a child actor playing him. You can play his mom. I guess if we did flashbacks. He can be 10 years younger. I can be 10 years older. What are you talking about? Well, it would literally take prosthetics for you to look like my mother. Um, Yes, but it's the Hollywood version, honey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Joel, do you have anything you would like to plug before we say good night? Uh, I'm not even sure what I'm a fucking allowed to plug. Oh, I'm yes, I do. I'm going to be uh, at Comedy on State in Madison, oh, Wisconsin. Club, club. We love that um, place. Oh, can I talk about my dates November, too? Oh, Joel. November 16th through the 18th, I'm at um, Comedy on State in Madison, which is, I think, maybe my favorite club in the country. It is a great club. I haven't been there in a long time. 
and I'm starting to take it personally, you guys. I will be at the American Comedy Company uh, in San Diego, California, December, the weekend of December the 12th. I will also, of course, be at the San Francisco <laughs> Sketch Fest doing a book launch. And if you have not pre-ordered my book yet, please do it now. Natasha? Come see me in Denver, November 16th through the 18th, oh. or in Salt Lake City, Utah, my favorite place, December 1st and 2nd. I got a whole bit from my special last time I was in Utah. I love it. Because they told me to not, um, I, I had to cover my shoulders in the Mormon mall. Do so you, I'm excited to make a return. Are you a housewife's person? No. Oh, okay. Forget it. Sorry. Find okay. Joel on social media. One of the funniest people. Also, he's got a Netflix special. Also, you can see Fire Island on Hulu. Mm -hmm. You could see Fire Island on, you could make it, you could make it, here, here's what I'm going to suggest. Psychosexual. Check Go out to Netflix. his special. Go to Netflix, watch Psychosexual. Come three times and then watch Fire Island <laughs> in a K-hole. Oh my God, yeah. that would be a fun night. That would yeah. be a good night. That's a Joel kind. Of, that's a yeah. soul Joel night. Right exactly, yeah. exactly. To my core. All right, Joel. Thanks for coming. Thank you. All right.